using chat to talk. We'll be using chat to talk. Okay, okay. I think we're live now. We're live. Okay. Hello. <laughs> What's going on now? The way you lie out. Thank you. <laughs>
Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, I hope, um, good evening, good afternoon. <laughs> good morning, depending on where you're joining us from. Um, thank you so much, Sandra, for that amazing um, introduction and also for um, the opportunity to share with you today. Um, like you all know, my name is Emeka Ebeniro. And um, like I was introduced, I'm a personal branding and transformation specialist. And my mission is to help right now my mission is to help a million individuals and businesses optimize their potential increase their visibility and grow their income so i don't know if you can hear me clearly if that is a yes 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 i would like to see that in the comments if that is a yes if you can hear me clearly is that a yes awesome 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 yes thank you so much yes i'm super super excited to be here today and I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be in this uh, make, Making a Difference platform um, powered by Sandra. And, you know, Sandra is my sister from another mother, you know, residing in another part of the country or in part of the world. And um, I'm super excited to be here. And I just want to share with you, you know, a few things about um, personal branding. You know, the truth is it's not going to be what you expect of how you've heard it before. Um, I always come with a different side to it. I always come with a different angle to it because that is what I'm sent to do. And that's my mission. That's something I'm passionate about. So if you're watching us live, please feel free to put in the comments, let us know where you're joining us from. And if you have questions about personal branding, also put that in the comments. I would love, 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 to love to take your questions. And, um, you know, let's, let's, let's get, let's go right into it. So, Sandra, I hope you're ready because I see that you're, you're, your pen and your note father, you're, you're ready to take notes. Awesome, 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 awesome. So yes, yes, yes. It's the personal branding. Um, should we call this a masterclass? Yes, we can call it a masterclass. With me, Emeka Ebeniru. I'm also known as Fire because I'm a fire speaker and I'm also a brand fixer. And today I am going to help you fix your brand. Yes, I'm going to help you fix your brand. But we're going to do it in a very different way, like I said earlier. And I'll start by saying um, this. Um, we are all products of our stories. And it's something that has hit me recently. And I'm like, yeah, that's really true. You know, it's the the, the mind experts and the neurological expert, Joe Dispenza, says it, that we are all products of our stories. And I, and I agree. And I've heard that from several other experts across the world. And it's the truth is we, we are all product of what we tell ourselves. And that also influences our brand. We're all product of what we tell ourselves. And we can even that could even be traced to the things that we like as children. So let me take you take you some steps, you know, some years backwards. Um, if you are like me, you grew up um, playing video games. I, you must have come across this game called Street Fighter. There's a video combat game called Street Fighter. If you don't know it, you can Google it. <laughs> You'll find that out. But there's this combat game called Street Fighter. And Street Fighter, they have so many characters. But but there are two characters that in that game that kind of like take that. I, I've been lately, I've been wondering like, uh, why would you create two characters that look that's so similar in terms of their abilities? It's Ken and Ryu. You know, Ken is American um, martial artist that fights. Ryu is Japanese. And basically, they all learned from the same master. Now, from the identification of those two characters, Ryu has like a band on his head and he ties it to the back. And he usually wears um, white um, um, outfit, so white combat outfit, while Ken wears blue. And he has his belt. They both have their belts, you know, to identify their category. But one thing that, you know, that I realized over the years, you know, being a, a younger person up until now is even as those two characters are similar, they have the same moves and everything, you realize that we as young guys, or even till today, have a preference for either one of them. You either see someone, a real Ken fan, like he loves using Ken. So if you're going to play that game, which character would you use? The person would pick Ken. Or you'll find someone that is using Ryu. The person would always pick Ryu. But they have the same move. I do Ken, show you Ken, the kick and every the same thing. But they're just two characters. Now, what does that mean? It means that 
the brand can resonate better with somebody else and the brand Ryu resonates better with somebody else. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this to say that even your own personal brand resonates with a particular type of person or people. And it's not just the way you dress or the colors you like to wear, but there's something about you that some people cannot place. There's something about you that is just resonates with so many people around the world that they just like the way you do things. What am I trying to say? Some call it vibration, some call it energy, some call it your vibe, your spirit, whatever you want to call it. There is a frequency that you tune into, that you radiate, that you push out there, that somebody catches every time they come in contact with you. And it's that frequency that they love. It's just like a radio station. They tune into your frequency and they love listening to your radio station or your show. And what is this show? It's the Sandra show. It's the Emeka show. It's the Dick Ball show. It's anybody listening to this show. Everybody just likes that way you do things. But the truth is, maybe up until now, you have not realized it. Maybe up until now, you have not activated it. Maybe up until now, you're not even aware that you are operating at a frequency that is not jamming with another person. But for one reason or the other, the staff and the members of your radio station are not working. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know whether you think you don't have the license anymore. I don't know whether you think you're not good enough for it. But I believe that the frequency at which that you're operating you are not using that radio station is not happening so what happens when people tune into that frequency and you know like when there's power outage you hear that feedback sound and they're like you know what these guys are not available today let me tune into somebody else and that's how they move to somebody else now why am i saying this i'm saying it's to say that like jeff bezos would always say what people say about you when you're not in the room is your brand what people say about you when you're not in the room is your brand. However, this brand is made up of several other things. I repeat, this brand is made up of several other things. So let's let's take it. Let's let's go back. Let's go back. Let me let me break it down for you because today I want to share from my heart and at the same time I want to teach you so that we are both on the same page. Okay. I hope you have an agreement. Fantastic. So what is a brand in a nutshell? According to my own definition, Emeka Ibenero, a brand is an embodiment of a promise. So a brand is not a logo. A brand is not a service. A brand is not a city. A brand is not any of those things that you know or a company. A brand embodies a promise. And what is this promise? The promise that you at your frequency would show up at your highest possible self every time. That is that promise. A brand, according to my mentor and also um, one of my teachers in branding, Charles Otudo, a brand is a storehouse of trust. So what does that mean? It means that every day when I operate at my own frequency, I am depositing trust in the heart of my audience. Who are my audience? My husband, my wife, my colleagues, people around. The world is my audience. So it's my responsibility to deposit trust in their hearts because according to Zig Ziglar, when people know you, they like you. When people like you, they know you, they like you. But when people trust you, they do business with you. So I want my husband to do business with me. What does that mean? I want my husband to entrust so much responsibility in me. I want him to know that I'm a partner in this marriage. I want my children to, to do business with me. I want them to know that I'm a good parent, that I have their greatest interest at heart, and I'll do anything to protect them. I want my colleagues in the office to do business with me. And what is that business? I want them to know that I'm capable enough to get this job done, and I'm a team player. I want my boss to do business with me. And what is that business? Sir, I can get this job done. If you need somebody for that management position, Position. I am the one you should employ. I am the one you should promote. That is the business that I'm going to do with my boss. I want the environment, the community to do business with me. Because
because I want them to know that they can entrust me to get the things done in this community. That is the business we're talking about. It's not just buying and selling, but it's the business of trust and value. I call it value ship, which is the exchange of value. So every day I am a carrier of value and I'm exchanging this value with everybody that I see and they receive it as my personal brand. So what else am I also talking about? I'm saying that in line with that, your brand is an embodiment of trust. However, branding is giving meaning to that embodiment. What am I saying? Branding is the process of giving meaning to your product, your service, your organization, yourself, your energy, your frequency. So when you brand it, you are giving meaning to it. That is how people will now understand it. That's how people will now get it. Oh, I now know why she uses green. I don't know why this is so. I don't know why that is so. Because I have given meaning to it. Let me give an example. All across the world, irrespective of the religion, every time a child is born, the parents do what we call christening, naming ceremony, whatever word you want to call it, that's what they do all across the world. What they are doing, and like you know the practice, they go in the presence of a clergy, family members, friends. The father holds the child or the mother-in-law or the mother holds the child. Someone in the family holds the child. Then the father has a list and he calls out names and he says, um, Emeka, um, Tony, or this or that. That is what they do. And in Nigeria, not only Nigeria, all the parts of the world, when those names are called out, they would ask, what is the meaning of that name? So you say, Chukwu Emeka, God has done it well. Amenewo. What is mine can never be taken away from me. Onuedo, gold, wealth. Oladi Pupo, wealth has come. Pashant, priestly, a priest. What they are saying is, we are giving meaning to this child. We are branding this child. And this is as a result of, one, the experiences we've had prior to giving birth to this child, to the expectations we have for this child in the future. You can say the vision we have for this child. So we are branding this child, giving meaning to this child based on the vision, the future. We've seen the future of this child and this child will bring us so much joy in this family. So we name the child based on the vision and the future that we see of this child. Then we give it meaning from that day of the naming ceremony. And guess what we do? We now train the child in line with the name that we give the child. So much so that we even give the child nicknames to resonate and reinforce the name that we originally gave that child. My bobo, my baby girl, my mama. Ha! This wealthy baby. Ah, you don't know what you have done for us in this family. That is what we have done. Then we have instilled those things inside the child. Then as we go along, we're now putting values in that child. We don't do this in this family. We don't do that. This is what you mean. No, you don't understand. This is your name. No, no, you have to carry yourself in a certain way. You have to remember the child of who you are. We say these things not knowing that we are branding that child. We are giving meaning to that individual. Then the child grows up and the child is conditioned to behave in a certain way. <laughs> not knowing that that child from the birth to this very stage, that child has been conditioned, has been programmed, has been cultured to behave in the brand that the parents have given him or her. However, along the line, life happens. And we forget our true identity, our name, our personal brand. 
And don't get me wrong, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Because, like we say, life will give you bass boost. Life is hitting you left, right, and center. And you're wondering, like, is it me? <laughs> well, my parents said that I was the... I, me? I, I'm gold now, but life is not making me feel like I'm gold now. <laughs> life take it easy on me. You know, and these things happen. And we forget who we truly are. So the essence of all this is to make you, re to remember, to stay you up and also to activate you so that you remember who you truly are and go back to your true identity and also understand how people would relate with you based on what I call the five dimensions of branding. Now, a brand, I said, is an embodiment of a promise, a storehouse of trust. Branding is giving meaning, just like the naming ceremony of a child, you are giving meaning to that child. That's what branding is. Now, however, why do you need to brand? Why do you need to remember who you are? It's important because what branding does for you is, branding first helps you connect with your audience. And like I said earlier, your audience is not just the people you sell to. Everybody around you is your audience. So what you are doing with branding, with your brand, your personal brand, is you want to connect with your audience because people buy from people they know, they like, and they trust. Two, you also want to ensure that people can recognize you. Your name is an identifier. Your name creates an emotional connection. Your name is a reminder. <laughs> so if I had a bad experience with someone and you mentioned the person's name, what happens? I remember the bad experience I had with that person. So your name is a reminder. Your name is an identifier because it differentiates you from every other person. And also your name is an emotional connection. So people connect with people based when you hear their name, oh, mm, they can connect with it because it's an emotional connection. And that's where your brand starts, starts from, your name. Now, drilling down a little bit, your name and your values, what values do you have? What values do you have? What values do you carry so dearly? This is very important. So, importance of branding, one, Build connection with your audience. Two, recognize you. Three, change perception. You want to change perception in your workplace. You want to change perception in your relationship. Why? People behave or treat us the way they treat us based on the perception they have of us. And this perception usually is not true. It could be engineered by what some other person said about you when you are not in the room. Remember what I said about what a brand is. According to Jeff Bezos, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So you are not at the office that day, or you are not at the supermarket, or you are not at that meeting, and someone said something about you that is not 100% true, but the other people in that room took that and they began to relate to you based on that. Now, around the world, you would hear things like, oh, people of a certain ethnicity, a certain race, and all that, they are known for some positive or some negative things. But the truth is, it is not true. <laughs> it's interesting to know that Nigerians are the most educated race in the world. Like, it's interesting. In the US, the statistics are there. The number of race when come up in Indians, Mexicans, Spanish, and all that. Nigerians and Africans are the high, are most educated people in the US and in the UK. But we are not seen that way. So somebody is saying things about us that is not 100% true when we are not in the room. And when they want to write about us, they write about us based on a perception that is not so true. So you need to rebrand or you need to start taking your brand seriously because one, like I said, you want to connect with people. Two, you want people to recognize you. Three, you want to change perception. So as a Nigerian, 
one of the first things you need to do wherever you find yourself in the world is you need to change the perception of that audience so that they don't see you like ah, uh, but you are different that's what they should say about you and when they say that the next thing you tell them is that means you really don't know nigerians we're not what the world paints us to be so changing perception the other thing that branding is important to brand is because branding would help you even charge more yes a professional with a good brand would definitely earn more money with the one without a good brand. An entrepreneur with a good brand would earn more money than his colleagues doing the same business that don't have a good brand. So branding would even help you earn more money because of the way you have positioned yourselves in the mind of the audience. Let's not forget that life is a battle of territory. And this territory we are talking about is territory of the mind. We're talking about how can you use your brand, change the perception. Perception is a mind thing. Change the perception of people so that they see you differently. It's not just seeing you differently. See you the way you truly see yourself. The way your name, the way you are, you are originally created, the way you are named, the way you are treated as a child. The, the culture and the doctrine and the values instilled in you, does the world around you see you that way? Or are you just a case of you are a local champion, highly celebrated in your family compound? <laughs> Is that the case? Or are you a global star? So you need to see yourself and work on your brand so that you can change the perception of the people around you so that you can also start charging your what. And that is one struggle that I see with a lot of coaches, leaders, trainers. Yes, you have the skill set. Yes, you're good at what you do, but you do not have the brand to complement on the level of excellence that you carry the level of expertise that you carry because you lack the ability to effectively communicate your genius and increase your influence. And this is as a result of your brand. So when you have the right brand, you would increase influence, you would increase impact, and obviously you would increase your income. Okay? So let's, let's go quickly to um, the five dimensions of branding. And it's so because that is how people engage with your brand. They engage with your brand from these five dimensions. And what are they? Quickly, the first one is sight. Five dimension is derived from our five senses. As humans, those are the, that's the way the world we communicate with the world or we experience with the world and the world experiences us through those five senses. And it's the same thing. The same thing happens to your brand. So the first is sight. And when we talk about sight, we're not just talking about just what you see, but people see you before they see you. What do I mean? They've not had that conversation with you, but they size you up, they look at you, and they think that there's something good or bad about you. And how do they see you? They see you from everything you put out there. The posts you put on social media, your WhatsApp stories, your every footprint your emails in your company chat room how you address things on the whatsapp group that you belong to how you address things. people are seeing you they are reading your 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 messages they're seeing what you post they're seeing the frequency and the type of videos that you post so they are seeing you before they actually see you two they see you through your colors your fonts your typography and all that stuff they see it too so your question is how do, can i change perception you change perception do you want to rebrand have a new logo work on your colors that speak about your values and what you hold so dearly ensure that your messaging is clear ensure that it's, you're highly professional so that when I see you, I read a letter from you. I read an email from you. I see your banner. I've already seen you. I say, oh, yes, this person has high level of excellence. This person is highly professional. This person is an expert. He or she knows what he is talking about. 
That's how they see you. And the thing about branding is what you're doing with your brand is you are, you are bringing, you're bridging the gap between perception and reality. So every day with your brand, you're bridging that gap. So I'm, I'm, I'm a certified coach, I'm a certified trainer, or I'm a project manager, whatever it is. I'm bridging the gap because some people do not know how much quality that I carry. So I don't want them to judge me wrongly. I don't want to miss out on opportunities. So I will use my first sense for my five senses, the five dimensions, which is sight, to ensure that when they see me, then they see me, what's inside of me. Okay? So, yes, that's the five, the first one. So the second one is sound. And I know a lot of you know these things because I know you're, you're very, you definitely, you know the five senses, sight, sound, taste, smell, um, touch. So the second one is sound. And what, that, what does sound mean? Sound means what do people hear? So what's my tone? What do I say? Do I speak with power? Do I speak with authority? Do I sound like someone that is in control, that is highly confident, well-trained, very professional? Do I sound that way? What is my brand voice? When people get in contact with my content, video, audio, whatever it is, I'm addressing a gathering. What do I leave them with? That's very important. What do I leave them with? Is it a case of they leave there transformed? Or they leave there knowing that they had a few hours or a few minutes in this place? So your brand voice is very important. Are you going to inspire them? Are you going to challenge them? Are you going to motivate them? Are you going to inform them? What is your brand voice? So that that way, when they hear you, <laughs> they hear you. Like the good book will say, it says, um, the, the shepherd says something about the sheep hear his voice and they listen and they run towards. So in other words, when they hear my voice, they, they can recognize it. Why is it so? It is so, like I said, using the Ken and Ryu analogy, some of us resonate with your tone. Some people might not like fire because it's very fiery. Some people like it really calm and cool. Some people might like it blended, whatever it is. Somebody likes you just the way you are, the way you sound, the way you do things. That is your sound and they can resonate. That's the frequency that they want to tune into and they will stay there. So you need to discover your brand voice and how you want to sound and make people feel. That is very important. Okay. Three, we move quickly. Let's talk about touch. So touch is more of, okay, my personality What's my personality like? When people touch my brand, when people feel my brand, what do they feel? When people come in contact with me, how do I make them feel? That is touch. What's your brand personality? What are your brand values? What are your brand pillars? Because that's what people will touch. So they come in contact with your brand and they're like, oh yes, she doesn't need, I've seen her, I've watched her, I've noticed her. I can say she or he has a high level of this, a high level of that, high level of excellence, high level of detail, high level of professionalism, high level of empathy and all that. That is what they would feel, which is touch. Oh, I have come in contact with her brand. She is or he is an expert in this area. He is a, a leader. That is touch. So my question to you today is, what are you doing with your brand that will touch other people so much so that they will know clearly, they can see your values. This is who she is. They can see your areas of influence. This is the area that she's really strong in. And they can also experience 
your personality. That's very, very important. Another one is smell. <laughs> and this for me is very interesting because when people say smell, they think it's the literal smell. Yes, it is, but also not. <laughs> so what am I saying? I'm saying that, yes, as a personal brand, yes, you should smell good, have your cologne, your perfumes, and all that. However, what is your culture? Because that's what the people smell. You walk into a room, and if the thing, if the place is not smelling so good, you can tell. Nobody needs to tell you that, oh, this place was not cleaned, or mm -mm. they don't need to tell you. You can smell it. The same way people can smell your culture and what you take important. The same way people can smell your confidence. It is said that in the animal kingdom, some of the predators can smell fear. Just the same way when someone is bleeding or there's blood in the water and there are sharks there, the sharks will move to where the blood is. The same thing happens to your brand. Your smell, we all have frequencies. We have a smell. We have a vibe that we resonate. Your brand has its smell. What is it? For some of us, we have forgotten our names so much so that our smells have changed. In other words, what am I saying? We're not as confident as we used to be. We're not as outgoing as we used to be. We're not as radiant as we used to be. We're not involved. We're not taking that leadership position as we used to be. So in other words, what made us think has changed. Our smell has changed. Confidence, not there culture not practice or maybe not even in existence <laughs> every solid and super brand has culture every solid and super brand has a particular way they smell and let me bring it literally when you enter any of the five any executive spot whether it's a hotel an office anywhere they have a smell it's so interesting that Hotels that have chains have the same smell across board because they don't want you to feel like it's different. So you go to a Tesco, a Target, any of those places, and if any of the stops that you, it's the same smell, the same look and feel, because they want you to understand that we are the same. Just the same way you are the same person as a brother, a husband, um, a friend, a colleague. It's one person. But you, you have different expressions. So your confidence, your culture should resonate across board. Okay? So that's something that is very, very important. That you ensure that as a brand, as someone that is going somewhere, as someone that is destined for greatness, as someone that is already blazing the trail, my culture, I would hold on to it because it's what people smell before I even say a word. They already say, oh, I, I wonder why this person behaved this way. And you can even see it in the videos that we see around on social media. So right now on social media, everybody is doing this prank or this um, goodwill giveaway where you go to a supermarket and you say, oh, please, I'm hungry. I don't have my wallet with me. Um, can you help me pay for my groceries? Can you help me do that? And we see it everywhere. And people, some people are like, ah, no, uh, you, you're, you're a young man, you should work. You're a young lady, you should work. And those that say, yes, no problem, I'll pay for you. Or they go dip, dip their hands in their wallet and they give them a dollar, two dollars, or ten dollars. And the person walks to the end of um, the, the corridor and comes back and says, you know what? I didn't actually need the money. I wasn't actually stranded. I was just I just wanted to bless somebody and I was looking for the first person to say yes to me. Here's a thousand dollars, here's five thousand dollars, here's five hundred dollars, and the list goes on and on and on. Now the question is: the people that said yes, why did they say yes? Is it that they don't have enough, or they have more than enough, or they knew it was a prank, or what? No. The people that said yes, said yes because it's their culture. <laughs> There's something about their brand that giving generosity is tied to their DNA. It's not in every one of us. And I don't blame you for that. So their brand can smell somebody in need. And when they smell somebody in need, 
it triggers that sense and says, this is time for my brand to act. I need to give because that is who I am. I'm not trying to be somebody else. I am a giver and I will give. That is their brand. They don't have to wear the best of clothes. They don't have to dress in a certain way. But they would give because that is what their brand is made of. I challenge you today. Identify what your brand is made of. Identify what's your culture. As a person, as a family, as an organization, you must have. And if you have it, please practice your culture. Okay? So I've talked about sight. I've talked about sound. I've talked about touch. I've talked about smell. And finally, I'm going to talk about taste. What is taste? Taste is your brand experience, your brand in use. What are your processes? How easy it is to work with you. When we say, oh, please, we need you on our platform, or when we say, please, come speak here, or when we want to do business with you, is it going to be easy to do business with you? Is it going to be easy to have a conversation with you? Is it going to be easy to bring you on board? Is it going to be easy? Is it going to be a good experience to experience you? Or did I waste my time by being here today? It's important for you to know that your brand, like I said, is what people say about you when you're not in the room. But that narration is shaped by the things that you took for granted. By the five senses, the five ways people interact with this brand that you never saw or you never activated or you haven't put so much work in, then they will take a narrative that is not yours and they will begin to say that about you. Maybe it was a bad day. Maybe you are not in the mood. Maybe you, are, you had a headache. Whatever it is, there was something you must have displayed that now created a narrative. Now, as a professional, as a leader, when your brand is in use, whether in an email, whether in, on a proposal, on a document, seeing you in the supermarket, um, training, watching a live, whatever it is, when your brand is in use, the ultimate goal is value and excellence. I need to feel better being experiencing you than I felt when I, when I didn't experience you at all. So your responsibility is to make people feel better. Your responsibility, and that's what brands do. Brands make us feel that without them, our lives are not better. And that's the truth. You buy a bottle of a soft drink. I know I don't want to advertise here. Yeah. You buy a bottle of a soft drink, and they make you believe that when you buy it, your life will be refreshed. And when you open it without even drinking it, you're already excited. That is what they made you believe. And before you know it, it now becomes the narrative that when I take this drink, I feel better. So my question to you now, if I come in contact with you, if I do business with you, if I invite you on my plan, will I feel better? Or will I feel I wasted my time? Would you make the experience better? Do I feel like I have a strong relationship or bond with you? Do I feel like I can always run back to you for solution? Or is it going to be um, once you have it, that's the end? Your brand in use, which is your taste, tasting it, like they say, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. When we taste your brand, how do we feel? How, what do we gain? How, what is the experience? That is very important for somebody that is building a brand and is going somewhere. I wrap up by saying that all these five senses come alive because of the vision. Remember, a parent gives a child a name because of the vision they have of that child. Your brand is built because of the vision you have of yourself. What do you see yourself? We are all products of our own stories. What is your story? Do you believe that your brand will touch lives across the world? If the answer is yes, then you start building your brand from that very point. I give an example for someone like John Maxwell that knew 
knows and for so many years documenting leadership, studying leadership, writing books and equipping himself, being on a growth journey because he knew that this is where I would be one day. I don't know how long it would take. I'm not counting the days. I'm just putting in the work and I'm excited about it. He began and he's building his brand based on that vision. I want to be a voice, but not be a voice for myself. I want to be a voice that would empower so many other voices. I want to be a leader that would light other candles so that other leaders around the world will have expression and the world will be a better place. So how do I brand myself? I need to brand myself as someone that is approachable. I need to stick to my true core values. I have to ensure that I am speaking and impacting lives. I have to ensure that I am supporting my people no matter where they join me from. I have to ensure that my network is super. I have to ensure that I have a rich... That is how he has built his brand, his systems, his processes in line with these five senses that you come across with. And at the end of the day, we are all enjoying this thing. And we say so many amazing things about him when he's not in the room. Your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. You build your brand from the future. And above all, never, never forget your name, why you are created, and your true identity. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I see you taking a lot of notes. Okay, I think Sandra is having issues with her sound. Um, please, if you have any questions, please put it in the comments. I would, I would, I would love to answer your questions while Sandra can sort out her sound. Um, once again, thank you so much, Sandra, for this opportunity. So please, if you have questions, put it in the comments. Um, while Sandra works on her sound, I would answer your questions. And like I said earlier, don't forget your five, um, the five dimension, the five senses and how you build your brand. You start building your brand from your vision to the very point, um, to the very present. And please do not forget what you're made of. So um, I look forward to getting your questions um, in the comments. And while we wait on Sandra to sort out her sound.
Okay. Um, we have a question here, Sandra. We have a question here. Um, someone says, Rita says, how do you protect your brand uh, identity? What you do if someone copies your brand? Thank you. So Rita says, how do you protect your brand identity? What you do if someone copies your brand? Okay, um, Rita, the truth is people can copy what you do, but they definitely cannot copy how you do it and why you do it. So I give an example. Um, you can say you are into baking or you make clothes. And someone can see your style and they can say, oh, this is how she sold it and they would copy it. But the process, they can't copy your process. They can't copy your inspiration. They can't copy your motivation. So when you realize somebody must have copied your output, they can't copy your story. So you can decide to switch things up and sell from the point of your story. Like I said, we are all stories. The stories we tell ourselves, we are a product of our stories. So now what's the positive side of that? What is the story behind your brand? So as you're promoting your brand, you promote your brand with your story. They can't copy your story. They can say they're in doing the same thing. Oh, I also do this. But they can't copy your motivation. And Simon Sayek says it's your in the golden circle, um, your how, your why, and your what. So they can copy what you do. How you do it will be difficult for them. And even if they copy the how you do it, the why you do it cannot be copied because that came to you from your creator. It is original. Two people don't have the same whys. So sell your brand from the point of your strength, which is your unique story, and be original and be consistent at doing that. So that's what I would say. They can't copy um, um, your story. Another thing you need to do is please, as you're doing that, please tell more of your stories. Trust me, when you show people your process and how beautiful it is to do what you do, then the competition can't copy that. Because if they try to do that, then every other person that has seen or has experienced your brand will be like, you know what, I've seen this before. This is definitely Rita's job or this is how Rita does what she does. Okay, so I, I believe, I hope I've been able to answer your question. Um, if that is a yes, please let's see that in the comments. Do we have another question? Um, I don't think so. Um, if we don't, um, I believe that should be about it. Yes, so on this note, I would just say if some few things um, on behalf of uh, making a difference platform um, powered by my, my amazing sister, Sandra. So guys, just a few things from the platform. So thank you each and every one of you for being part of this. Honestly, it's it's it's. I know it's a sacrifice, especially for those of us in Nigeria. This is um, past 11 um, p.m., but we're here because we all want to make a difference. And we thank you. We do not take it for granted. God bless you a million times over. Um, thank you for doing that. Also, we also want to make you understand and uh, remind you that in case you don't know, if you're meeting Sandra for the very first time, Sandra is in Nigeria. No, don't think she's not in Nigeria. She's in Nigeria. She's my sister. So, and she is a best-selling author and also a certified John Maxwell leadership team member i repeat that she's the best-selling author and also a certified john maxwell leadership team member and if you have any question if you like to get in contact with sandra please you can do that send your email to info at sandra .com, or you can send your email to info at deep insight world .com. deep is d-i-p insights world.com just whatever it is you have something troubling your heart you need clarity on anything whatever it is please send an email to info at sandraoko.com or info at deepinsightworld.com and also know that sandra is definitely available on social media you can find her on instagram and also on facebook with her name just search for sandra Uko. you would find um, Sanja. And if you want to follow me, my name is Emeka Ebeniro. I'm available on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you name it, WhatsApp, 
<laughs> TikTok, and the list goes on and on. But if you want to hit me like right now, you want you want to get like um um a, a free because of Sanjay, I'm going to give you a free 30 minutes um, discovery call whereby we can sit down together and discuss and uncover um, your brand. And I get to listen to you and what you're trying to achieve or the places that you might be missing it. Please hit me up on Instagram. Follow me at Emeka Ebeniro. That's my name. Emeka Ebeniro on Instagram. Follow me right now. Send me a DM. Tell me that you you saw my, you know, you were part of um, Deep Insights, the Making a Difference platform. And definitely I'll send you my calendar link. Let's, let's do this. I really want to help you. Like I said, my mission is to help a million people optimize their potential, increase their visibility, and grow their income. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you once again. Do not forget, build your brand from your vision and keep sticking through your identity. Your creator has made you special. Your creator has made you unique. There is a frequency, there's an energy that you resonate that is solely yours. Like we all know, we don't have two DNAs, two, two fingerprints. So there's something special about you that the world's looking for. So why don't you go there, shine for the, your light has come and the glory of the Lord risen upon you. So enjoy your day. Thank you so much. God bless you. We will see you soon. So make sure you follow Sandra. We're coming back with more and more amazing things on Making a Difference platform. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Cheers.